I think what was really alarming is to see a teenager go through this. In children, there's a, there's a lot of concern. The teachers also were just, they weren't prepared for this. They had no clue of what was going on. I thought it was mainly for old people. I think paramedics aren't used to seeing this as well. It is stroke, and it's more common in children than you might think. Pediatric stroke is the sixth leading cause of death in children. Researchers say that each year, stroke kills more kids than diabetes and meningitis combined. 60% of pediatric stroke victims suffer long-term disability. The numbers are high, but doctors say awareness could dramatically lower those statistics. After all, on average, it takes 24 hours for a child to be diagnosed with stroke. Doctors say that treatment needs to begin within three hours. And even if a child does live, if treatment doesn't begin fast enough, there can be implications for years to come. Hi, I'm Russ Spencer from WAGA-TV Fox 5 in Atlanta. You may not know it yet, but these next few minutes will teach you some things that could someday make the difference in the life of a child. Childhood stroke is a time bomb. Many of the conditions that cause it are unknown until they strike. Now, we're going to tell you what you need to know about pediatric stroke, what it is, the symptoms, and what you should do if you come across a child with those symptoms. Let's start with a basic question. What is stroke? We asked Dr. Selena Wadi, an assistant professor of neurology at Emory University in Atlanta. She specializes in stroke. About 80% of strokes are what's called ischemic stroke, and that's where a blood clot is blocking a blood vessel so that you're not getting blood to an area of the brain. Now, the other 20% of strokes are called hemorrhages, which happen when blood vessels in the brain break up and cause bleeding inside the brain. You've probably heard the conditions that raise the risk for stroke in adults. High blood pressure and cholesterol, poor eating habits, smoking, and lack of exercise. Now, the causes of stroke in children are different. You might not know about some of those risk factors until the problems arise. Many of the causes in children are congenital, meaning the child was born with the cause. These types of causes include defects in the structure of the heart, blood clotting disorders, and problems with the blood vessels in the brain. In rarer cases, some childhood diseases like chickenpox can cause changes in the brain's blood vessels, leading to stroke. In some cases, though, even a car accident can result in a stroke years later. Again, Dr. Selena Wadi from Emory University. There can be a tear associated with a carotid artery or a vertebral artery. The bottom line, the risk factors associated with pediatric stroke can potentially be found in any child, no matter their shape, size, race, or gender. Everyone's brain is unique, and not everyone has a stroke in the same part of the brain. The symptoms can differ from person to person. Joanne Waldrop was a critical care nurse for 16 years. Today, she teaches high school science, a job that unexpectedly propelled her into the role of a first responder when a student experienced a suspected stroke. He was slightly responsive. He was not moving, very cold, clammy. Um, pulse was weak and rapid and his blood pressure was elevated and he wasn't really able to control the movement of his extremities and so we just lowered him to the ground and tried to keep him calm and we called 911 immediately. Now even though the symptoms vary, the American Stroke Association says that there are five symptoms that should be immediate red flags. Sudden numbness or weakness of the face, arm or leg, especially on one side of the body. Sudden confusion, trouble speaking or understanding others who are speaking. Sudden difficulty seeing in one or both eyes. Sudden trouble walking, dizziness, loss of balance or coordination, and sudden severe headache with no known cause. Dr. Wadi, who spends her days treating stroke patients, takes it even further, saying that any symptom deserves immediate attention. So if anyone's having sudden onset of focal neurologic symptoms that's new, it's unexplained, it needs to really be investigated. In Georgia, only about 14% of stroke victims arrive at the hospital in time to receive the best treatments available. With children, the percentage is even lower. Dr. Wadi explains why immediate treatment is so necessary. And the thing is, you may have numbness now, but that doesn't mean that's where the stroke is going to end. 
Uh, physicians say that patients have three hours from the start of symptoms to receive treatment. Those three hours include transport to a hospital, initial evaluation by the emergency room physician, imaging studies, and finally the decision normally made by a neurologist on the type of treatment to pursue. All that takes time and we try to do it as quickly as possible, so that means patients can't sit at home until two hours and 45 minutes. U.S. Senator Saxby Chambliss agrees. He has introduced legislation multiple times recognizing the effects of childhood stroke and has become the Senate's leading advocate for awareness and research of that condition. I'm United States Senator Saxby Chambliss. Each year, thousands of newborns, children, and adolescents experience a pediatric stroke. Of these children, 12% will lose their lives and over half will have serious long-term neurological disabilities. Many children, adolescents, and parents did not know the signs of childhood stroke. The permanent health concerns and treatments resulting from childhood stroke can have lasting emotional and financial burdens on both the child and the family. That's why I've gone to the Senate floor for the past couple of years to offer a resolution to raise awareness of childhood stroke. The earlier that we are able to diagnose and begin treatment for victims of childhood stroke, the better the chances are for recovery and a reoccurrence is less likely to happen. It's my hope that more people are made aware of the symptoms of childhood stroke in an effort to accurately diagnose, treat, and eventually prevent this from happening to our children. Unlike an injury like a sprained ankle or a small cut, you can't fix a stroke, making the need for immediate advanced care all the more important. But there are some steps that you can take to help the patient and medical professionals. Obviously, you need to call for help. The sooner you dial 911, the sooner professionals will arrive. Also, follow the ABCs of first aid, airway, breathing, and circulation. It's easy to check for an airway and breathing with a conscious victim. Simply ask him or her to speak. It's, it's more difficult with an unconscious patient, obviously, so you need to listen for breathing and watch the abdomen to see whether it rises and falls. If the patient is not breathing, begin CPR. Now, if the victim is breathing fine, place him or her in the recovery position, which is on the patient's side. Circulation is also easy to check. Consider the patient's skin color, temperature, and consciousness to determine whether there is adequate circulation. If there are severe abnormalities, consider CPR. If you have questions, relay them to the 911 dispatcher. Also, it's important that you not give the victim anything, especially any kind of medicine. Depending on the type of stroke, some medicines could cause more harm than good. Perhaps the best thing you can do is to simply remain calm and be ready to provide details to the emergency crews when they arrive. They were very frightened. The first thing the teacher usually does is tries to get the students out of the room, but the students don't know what's going on. They just know that they've seen this child go unresponsive and fall out of his chair and not be able to move anymore, and so they're very frightened. A stroke can be devastating in adults. With kids, the effects can dramatically alter the life of a child. Among other concerns, the possibility of long-term disability exists, and a child will have to cope with the reactions of his or her friends to the incident. A lot of them thought he was dying, and they were out in the hallways crying and hugging each other and, and trying to stay calm themselves as best they could. You know how high school students can be. Um, rumors started flying, and people were asking, you know, what happened to him, what, what's going on, and um, of course, stuff got out of hand, and people were really shocked and confused and didn't really know what was going on. As a first responder, part of your role is to comfort others around you and the victim. You may also have to deal with the aftermath of the stroke. Now, we asked some counselors about what they would do and came up with this list. First, helping others through a crisis involves remaining calm yourself. Second, if possible, clear bystanders who are not actively assisting in treatment out of the room. Sending them to meet emergency crews and having them guide the way to the victim can save time, reduce confusion, and provide a productive means to occupy them. Third, once the victim has left the scene, talk to students about what happened. Do not tell them things that could be inaccurate. For example, if a student asks, will he be okay, don't say yes unless medical professionals have told you. Fourth, keep students updated on what is happening in the aftermath. Be honest with them because chances are they will find out the truth anyway. And finally, when a student returns to school, help others to understand that you can't catch stroke. Interacting with the victim will not hurt anyone, and as a matter of fact, people should understand that actively engaging the victim upon their return to normal activities will actually help the victim. 
Pediatric stroke is a condition that cannot be cured, but with your help, more lives can be saved. Remember the five warning signs, numbness or weakness, difficulty speaking or understanding others, vision trouble, dizziness or loss of balance, severe headache with no known cause. If you see a child with any warning sign, trust your instincts and call for help. Your decision to seek help just might be the difference because time lost is brain lost, whether the victim is a nine-year-old or a 90-year-old. Thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Spencer.